Other things you can do, uh, you can attach audio files to a PowerPoint slide. Maybe some of you have done that before. But you know, increasingly we're getting a lot of digital media in our cases, whether it's audio or video. We may have uh, a case, I had, I had a murder case where I had about 10 ransom calls. And I got them on a CD. Now it's a little cumbersome when you want to publish those recordings for the jury. Okay, I got the CD in the computer, then I have to open up Windows Explorer, then I have to find the right file, click play, wait for Windows Media Player to open up, and then that phone call can be played. Instead, what you can do is you can attach all those audio files to a single PowerPoint slide. Now, I've got two on here. It could be 10, it could be 20. You just attach a label to it. You have them all in one convenient place, and you can play them in any order that you want. So you can put all your sound files in one place and you can get to them. Much easier, much more effective in front of your jury. It saves time. Surveillance video. Uh, I tell my kids, if you're in a public place, assume you're on camera. There are cameras everywhere. You would not believe the type of video I work with uh, in my office. Uh, by the way, I, I've been a Cook County State and Assistant State Attorney for 23 years. Uh, in addition to a couple other things, I run our trial technology unit. Um, I spent a good deal of my time taking digital media, putting them into PowerPoint presentations for other prosecutors to take into court. I also do my own cases, of course, but I do them for, I service the entire office of over 800 lawyers, uh, me and another guy. So not everyone's using it, thankfully. Uh, I hope that they will someday, but, uh, but I've seen all sorts of video. I, could, I can't tell how many murders I've seen captured on video. Gas stations, currency exchanges, uh, pod cameras, those blue flashing lights that you see on top of poles sometimes in the city of Chicago. Right? Those cameras are running, and, and people are killing people in front of these cameras. I'm getting them, I'm working with the video. Uh, this is, and some of you may have seen this from the 1L competition, this is in our robbery of a fast food restaurant where I took the camera from the video footage from three different cameras and put it together into one video file. So it's a con it's a basically a, a continuous movie using three different camera angles. It's a lot easier than taking the disc that you get from the fast food restaurant and saying, okay, I want to play camera angle number one for five minutes, which just shows the outside. Then camera angle number two for five minutes, which shows uh, the cashier area the fast in the drive-through window. Then camera number three, the off for five minutes. Then the jury's left with trying to put everything back in the sequence. Using video editing software, which we'll show you tomorrow, you can cut all three cameras into pieces, put them back together in the right order, and create a logical sequence. <coughs> this guy was uh, a licensed security guard sticking up fast food restaurants. She's very calm because she's been doing this almost as often as he has. He hit the same place a week earlier. She's been through it before. And he was arrested, oh, maybe a mile down the street with that bandana, that sweatshirt, that gun, those gloves, those sunglasses, in those jeans, in that van. And, uh, decided to go to trial. It was a very quick guilty. The closing argument pretty much wrote itself in the PowerPoint presentation. So. But that's one thing you can do with video. Diagrams. Very effective way to make your case, whether it's evidence presentation or a closing argument. Very simple use of a diagram here. You can show movement on a diagram. Compliance. That could be the path of the offender before the crime. But if you wanted to, you can become a little bit more creative because anything you put on a PowerPoint slide, you can move. So if you want to show us path after the crime, there it is.
Diagrams are really useful when you have a complicated case. Um, this is a presentation I did for a gang shooting. And there's a, there's a, uh, a male driver and a female passenger in the car. And essentially, they end up being surrounded by three cars of gang members. And one of the guys in one of the cars gets out, shoots into the victim's car, killing the female passenger. But that evidence came from about five different witnesses. So you've got three different offenders' cars, testimony coming from five different witnesses, and four, five, six, seven different offenders. So it's kind of tough in the jury's mind to kind of keep straight, all right, who was where, who did what, who said what. So I, I put this together for the trial, and, and, and this was over a year ago, and I saw the guy who tried this case again uh, at some training Friday, and he again thanked me for this, because it just made really clear what happened in this case. So we'll start with a call out. This is a part of the south suburb of Chicago. 766 South Newell is where the shooting takes place. There's your victim's car. It pulls up to 766. And what this does is ties all the evidence together. Here's one of the offender's cars. It's yellow. And there are the four people in that car, in their respective seats. So upper left is the driver, upper right is the front seat passenger, and the two girls are sitting in the back. Blocks in the victim's car from the front. This gold car with one occupant, that's the shooter by the way, pulls up blocks in the victim's car from the passenger side. This black car has two guys in it. They block in the car from the back. And what happens here, what I don't animate is the crime. This Computerized animation of a crime is a completely different science. I won't go there. It's very strict foundation for it. This is purely demonstrative. What happens here is the guy who's loaning the gold car gets out, steps between the yellow car and the gold car, shoots into the blue car, hitting the female passenger. The driver then backs up into the black car and drives away. Now imagine trying to tell the jury what happened in this case without the assistance of a diagram, without this visual to kind of reinforce in their heads where everybody is. It'd be a nightmare going through it either witness by witness or car by car or however you think is most effective. This visual backs up the spoken word and the jury has an exact idea of what happened. And I was actually validated on this a couple weeks ago. I did another PowerPoint presentation similar to this where a car uh, drove from east to west down the road. Uh, I put pictures of the victim and two witnesses on the street and then I had the uh, an axe where the offender got out of the car, shot down the street, hit the victim, and then drove off. Now, in this particular case, the judge let the attorney use the visual, the diagram, in the closing argument, but would not, of course, let the jury take it back in the jury room because it was demonstrative evidence within the judge's discretion. Well, the jury returned a, a, a guilty verdict, and the prosecutor that I prepared the demonstration for went back in the jury room and looked at the chalkboard that they had, and the jurors had draw, drawn an exact replica of my PowerPoint diagram on the chalkboard. They remembered what they saw on the screen and do the exact same thing. So that's how important this stuff is.